Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. Alpha 3.24.2 is now out to wave one on the PTU, which means we can actually show off some more of that and uh, talk about it a bit more. So this has added um, some concierge members, sort of like the higher tier of concierge, and subscribers uh, and a few of the most active testers and reporters to the player pool for the 3.24.2 patch. It's not all the features yet, but we've also got some news with the Day of Vara being live, which is Star Citizen Halloween for the month. We've got more CitizenCon info, which is only two weeks away, and there's a sneak peek at a new vehicle. So, Alpha 3.24.2 is now Wave 1 PTU. It is a 44 gig patch, effectively, if you update your current live version of Star Citizen. Why is it so big? Because there's not that much to it. Well, it's actually built on the 4.0 code base. So this is the 4.0 branch, and then they've turned off all the sort of 4.0 features or a load of the 4.0 features aren't ready. Uh, and then they've uh, put in the additional bits with um, what's in this patch currently, the vehicle HUDs and MFD rework, which is pretty extensive. This is, this is a huge amount of changes to the way that you will interact with your ship and the uh, sort of availability of data at a glance. It, it, it's really awesome, the, the new MFDs. They, they make a load more sense. That They look really great. You've got a load of options as well. They're all diegetically in-game now, so you can turn off your sort of... Um, you can change your, your pips for your, your fire modes, and you can turn your fire mode to staggered. You can have all your different flight modes here. All the different manufacturers are going to have their own. It's only a few of the manufacturers, only some of the manufacturers in 3.24.2, and the rest have a generic update for the MFDs in the short term. But yeah, really, really great. Uh, we also got uh, some new updates to the character customizer, some new heads and DNA, beards, tattoos, um, additional hairs. We've got piercings that will be coming in. This should propagate down to NPCs at some stage as well. We've also got new biomes for caves, rock type and acidic type. I'm going to have a proper search around for those and get some beauty shots over the coming few days. Uh, there's a load of flight tuning and archetype balance that is going on at the moment and will be going on throughout the PTU, trying to get 3.24.2 and 4.0 in the best possible state. Uh, the boost changes that you may have heard of have already been reverted, so um, if you hadn't heard of anything about the boost changes, don't worry about it. But um, if you were like, oh, they've, they've broken master modes even more, they've made it worse, um, that's, that stuff's already been reverted because although they are going to have some balance changes, in this patch and 4.0 the main sort of balance stuff will come in patches after 4.0 so it looks to be the major focus after 4.0 has been released getting ship balance getting the flight model getting master modes all into the best possible sort of situation they can be there's a load of new ui and front end updates new um, arena commander updates as well looks very cool all of the the ui for all of that stuff as far as i'm aware the zeus cl and es are currently missing from this build at least i don't have access to them uh, and if you've been following the patch notes um the most recent build of this patch was released on the 4th of october and then shortly afterwards went out to wave one pt it was eva Carty, and then they went yeah it's good enough for for wave one which means it's ready for a larger sort of player base to test and it's stable enough that it's not just headbutt the table in frustration. Uh, but yeah, the, the latest patch added a few new features and, and tweaks. Uh, there was some ship HUD polish. They added new weapon ammo type icons to the weapon config screen. They've added tool tips for MFDs, tweaked some bits for power management. The They've also reduced the overall hull and thruster health for the Hornet series of ships. Uh, they've been rendered a texture shader improvements. There are also a ton of bugs for from the previous patch that have been fixed, some long-running issues have been addressed, and yeah, the, the, the stability and performance updates are pretty good from what I can see. There's still some areas of the game where performance drops if you go to certain locations or look at certain things, uh, like in your hangar and the new MFDs in a certain way, and certain ships have got problems for sure. Yeah, yeah there, in fact, there are some pretty big issues with that patch currently, I, I should say. Uh, missions weren't spawning for me when I was playing. There also weren't any harvestable spawning in the in the servers at the moment. Lo load of this is obviously known issues. Aesop ship spawning can sometimes just break, as can trying to store a ship. They can like fall through the elevator, get stuck in the elevator. NPCs sometimes don't spawn 
incorrectly still, especially around bunkers. Various ship-specific issues are sort of um, turning up. There's a few issues with your UI and like friends lists. There are a few locations around the Persistent Universe, um, like Grim Hex and Prisons and some of the landing zones like New Babbage and Orison, where elevator panels are greyed out. Some of the transit systems are a bit janky. You are unable to plot routes sometimes in the star map because it was a sort of destination obstructed, even though it's not. So some of that stuff does need to be addressed before going to live. Obviously, they're quite egregious, some of those issues. But as far as uh, Wave 1 PTU patch goes, it's actually pretty solid. And remember, this is actually built on the 4.0 code base, which should mean that when 4.0 goes live, well, actually, they've been bug fixing that code base for a while. You can expect a load more stuff going on throughout this PT phase. Expect the blockade runner to be tested a few more times. And um, they, they test that in the patch before this one. Uh, expect tech preview tests as well. Sort of, um, they're going to be testing server meshing. They're going to be testing all that sort of stuff with this 4.0 code base. And yeah, they're, they're going to be constantly doing that because they're going to want 4.0 server meshing to be in the best possible situation. I'm thinking that this is probably going to be a CitizenCon release patch. Um, that's what it looks like anyway. And um, let's talk about the sort of newsletter and some other bits. And well, with CitizenCon in mind, CitizenCon is just two weeks away. Check out the freshly updated FAQ for all the essential details, including start and end times, uh, before planning your route around the convention hall with the event map the countdown is on. So for those of you attending in person, I've done a video looking at all of those latest details and the map and all that sort of stuff. Um, you're basically going to be welcomed aboard uh, in an active duty Bengal class carrier, the UES Barbary, which was the sort of Bengal that was flying around during Fleet Week uh, a couple of years ago. So we don't have the details of the presentations and panels yet. We do know it's going to be relatively Squadron 42 heavy, at least that's the expectation. And we do have some details of the community booths that have been announced as well. So we've got JRDF the people that make Star Citizen models, they they sometimes make really large models that looks like there is a, a sort of Hornet in the, the uh, main hall, which they would have made a, a big giant one. But if you want to buy some cool resin prints of models, uh, they're the, the place to buy it. There's Polycus Workshop. Now, I believe they paint ships and make um, sort of uh, ships again. There's CIG props team there. They're going to be making some of the sort of items from the digital goodies pack uh, on the show floor live. Uh, there's the Xi'an workshop. You can sort of have your name written in Xi'an. Uh, there's a giant Banu Merchantman model from the Merchantman. And there are a load of orgs like Test Squadron and Mongol Squad and Machinima Creators, but the stall on the Bar Citizens. Tons of stuff there. And there's a load of sponsors and things like Toby Eye Tracker are there and Scanner there, uh, VKB for Hotas stuff. Super excited for all of that. Starts on the 19th of October, although there's like a week of Bar Citizens in Manchester leading up to that. As soon as we have more information about the presentations and all that sort of stuff, we will share it. I'm super excited for CitizenCon. It's, yeah, two weeks away. Awesome. So, Devara rises from the grave once more with the loot scattered around Stanton and the challenge coin earnable in Arena Commander. There's two community contests and more. Basically, you go looting for these masks, you find masks, um, I believe they're permanently added to your account if you've um, for the first time you find them, basically. So this is the nine spooky Halloween masks. Um, so yeah, go, go searching, have a, have a look around. Uh, get ready for an exhilarating month of Arena Commander's FPS Kill Collector that promises a challenge coin for the top slasher. So if you win that, you get a challenge coin. It's cool little things to get involved with. There's a ship sale going on as well. There's a load of spooky um, new paints for a variety of ships and the old ghoulish green paints available as well if you want to purchase them. There is a sneak peek and a new vehicle in the newsletter as well. A little bit of a spoiler. So end the video now. It's only going to be a NordVPN ad after this or whatever. And um, if you don't want to know, if you don't want to know the stuff, you don't want to know the spoiler. So this is likely the Argo CSV, which is potentially coming out with 3.24.2 or the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. So this vehicle has been rumored and data mined recently. So it's not 100%. Also, don't have much information beyond that. Some people saying it's a cargo vehicle, some people saying it's a drone vehicle, some people saying it's got a load of variants, some people saying it's just combat and anti-air. But we should find out in the not too distant future exactly what that is from CIG's mouth, which is the, the correct place to hear it, I suppose. Leaks and rumors are just that, take with a big 
grain of salt until they are realized. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I am really interested to know, are you playing in 3.24.2? What are your experiences of that? Are you looking forward to Citizen Con? What are you expecting to see there? Are you expecting a Squadron 42 release date to be announced? Are you getting involved with the day of the Vara stuff or it, it, are you not particularly interested in the stuff until after Citizen Con? Is, is that what you're, you're waiting for? You're not playing Star Citizen at the moment? You don't like the master modes. Oh, I hate the master modes. I'm going to wait until the game's better. Whatever your thoughts or questions, though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. A very long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, CIG had taken over the development of NordVPN. And at NordicismCon, the yearly Nord FanFest, they were releasing their first game, Squadron Nordy 2. It's amazing, and it would truly revolutionize the FPS industry. Then I woke up and realized that NordVPN is already great and released, and it doesn't need an FPS module, it's a VPN. And you should get it now, links below, discount. That helps channel. Read bullet points. Every month we have a ship giveaway for October. It's for a Drake Corsair with a game package and lifetime insurance. All you have to do to be in for a chance of winning that lovely Star Citizen access and ship that can be used for exploration, but it's also this cool little multi-role, multi-crew ship. You just need a comment on any of our videos made during October. That will go into the hat. It's not a hat, it's it's a spreadsheet. It goes into that, and then a random person is chosen. With the addition of Alpha 4.0 and Pyro, there's going to be tons more to see and explore. The Corsair is perfect for that. Good luck. Please consider supporting the channel as well. We've got the join button under our videos that will make you a channel member. That goes a long way in supporting the channel, as does becoming a Patreon. It's pretty much the same thing, but for different mediums. You can also like, comment, share, or sub. Things like that. That all helps with the channel hugely. We are also gathering questions for Citizen Con, so chuck those in the comments below as well. If I find any appropriate devs, I will ask your question, or I, I will probably amalgamate lots of questions together and make them more concise. Thank you so much for your support and watching, and I hope you have a great October.